Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. So I'm back on the Sun Al and I'm deliberately going through this kind of step by step because any of us could end up with one of these things. Quick review, this thing is the Sun Al salvaged um, uh, it's a Sun Al 150cc alias um, I guess I could call it a uh, doom buggy or an off-road go-kart also. So anyway, I bought this thing and I looked at the wiring mess and I said, boy, I can fix that. And I kind of overpaid for it. I paid 450 bucks for it. Turns out in the long run, I probably did okay because it was only an electrical problem. Um... A lot of times folks will find these things at an auction and you say, oh, it's an electrical problem. I could go watch Harvey's videos. I'll sort right through this electrical problem and it's running. Well, you get done sorting the electrical problem and you find out you have a bad starter, thrown rod, or any of the multitude of other problems. Your torque converter is no good. You got bad bearings. Your... Um, Rack and pinion steering is no good. So, um, do be careful. Once again, at 450, if I would have run into an engine problem or something else, I, I could have found myself in uh, losing money on this deal. But it, once again, it looks like I'm going to be okay. Now, where, I'm, where I am with this thing is I did get it to start. Or I checked the compression, it was good. I got it to, so that was one. I got it to start, and I managed to get a ride out of it. So now it's a matter of fixing the wiring harness that's been a mess. And believe it or not, not all that hard to do. Actually, you're kind of a, a piece of cake if you go through a few basic things. But when you own one of these things, you don't want to have to you know play you know like magic scientist in the back you want to just walk up to it walk up to the key switch you know turn it and then you know hit the starter come on oh don't be fussy well, I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna have to give it some gas. It smells flooded, so uh, let me sneak in here, give it a little gas, and once again, hopefully she fires right up. So as you hear. It's ready to go, and if I turn the key off, it stops. Um, for a lot of people, they look at the wiring and they say, Oh man, what a mess, what do I do? Well, an ATV electrical system... Um, it, there's just a few parts to it and and let me quickly go through them and then we'll go through the diagram and hopefully it all it all makes complete sense when I am done first of all wires come from the battery and they go up to the starting solenoid okay um that side of the starting solenoids on the battery side and um, no this side of the solenoid with the extra wires is the battery side that side of the starting solenoid goes off to the starter okay that simple you'll also notice a couple of other wires coming into the starter we'll talk about those in a second what they do is they engage the coil which engages the starter, which puts, which basically shorts these two leads together. And once you short those leads together, your starter's going round and round. Also notice these extra wires here. This is the battery wire that comes from the battery, goes to the starting solenoid, and you have extra wires come off 
that feed accessories. <laughs> and by accessories, that power wire comes up and goes to the back of the switch here. The back of the switch has two additional terminals. You'll see one says ignition. Right, I think you guys could read that. Anyway, the black wire goes to the ignition. And the second one says solenoid. So this purple looking wire goes off, comes back to the starter solenoid. And what it does is it, it um, when you turn the switch to that position, that's where you engage the starting solenoid. When you turn it to the first position, it sends power back on the black wire. Well, here's the black wire that comes from there. So when the switch is turned on, it sends wire to the black wire, and the black wire sends it right to my CDI, which means once the um, the switch is turned to the on position, the CDI is all ready to start sparking. Okay. And when I turn to the second position, right, power comes out of this purple wire, goes through my alligator clamp, and goes right to the coil on my starting solenoid right there. The other side of the starting solenoid goes through this wire and ground. As I went through the mess of wiring they had here, they had a couple of places where when you turn the key on, it would, um, you would turn the key on and it was a short, you know, right, right to ground. And you know, this is the kind of stuff they were doing. Now it took a few moments and you know, you know you're doing too much of this when you're beginning to, to um, just, you can just sit down and draw a wiring diagram. You know you've spent too much time working on these things. So let me just take a moment and go through it from a schematic point of view and hopefully helps. So, your ATV electrical system, let's start right at the battery, right? The battery goes to one side of the starting solenoid, I showed that to you, and you can see there's more wires coming off of that. Forget that for now. So, once again, battery into the starting solenoid. The other side of the starting solenoid goes to the starter, and the starter, whether it's bolted to ground, there's a wire going to it from ground or whatever, um, it picks up ground, typically through the engine case. So that's one piece of your starting circuit. The second piece of your starting circuit involves the starter solenoid coil. Once again, you start at 12 volts, then you go through um, that purple wire I pointed out on the switch, when you turn the switch to start, right, it closes that, energizes your coil, your coil closes, it energizes this, your starter goes around. I also mentioned there was a kind of two switches in the key switch. One did the starting solenoid, one also ran all the power, and I call it to the accessories, ignition power, accessories, all that other stuff. When you turn that key on, right, it comes down to the CI, the um, CDI, and it powers up the CDI. Also on the CDI, just for your own amusement, you got ground, you got the... Um, the blue-white that comes to the pulse generator, and that last lead goes to your spark coil. So when I turn the key switch to one click, to the on position, right, it powers up my CDI. When I turn it to the start position, it engages my starter solenoid, which closes the switch, which makes my starter go round and round, and the engine is running. Um, color coding. One must be very careful. On a lot of the Honda stuff, right, they'll run some kind of red wire to the ignition switch. And sometimes out of the ignition switch, 
the load side of the ignition switch, so to speak, they make it black. I wish they would like make it red with a black stripe or red with a yellow stripe or red with any other kind of stripe, but a lot of times they make it black. Well, a lot of times people also use green or use black for ground. And sometimes they use green for ground. And on a lot of the Chinese stuff, they use black and green interchangeably on ground. <laughs> so you really need to spend a few minutes making sure where all the wires go. A lot of times people will write me and say, hey, how do I fix this? I have the following color wires. Well, that that's about impossible to answer because I can say, well, the black wire is ground and it might be hot coming out of your your um, your power switch right or, or I could say your green wire is ground well your green wire might be ignition ground which could be chassis ground which could be the same as your 12 volt ground or it should be the same as your 12 volt ground but not always sometimes um, once again the Chinese people do a little different do some different stuff so you really got to trace out all your wires and spend a few minutes looking at them I'm really happy because once again the card is is really progressing um, probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna button up some of the wires here and uh, go forward on it the interesting thing about this cart and it took me a little while to figure out this cart has um, coils has a coil in the stator so I can use an AC powered ignition box in it and powered from the stator um, but when they wired this cart for sale they wired it with a DC powered CDI box which means you need a battery in it and all to make that CDI box work um, and the way I kind of discovered it is there's no way of turning off the cart except removing 12 volts from the um, CDI box and the only way to do that is to wire the CDI box as kind of an accessory so um, though the cart will do either the um, the way to do it such that your key switch will turn it off um, you, you have to wire the CDI box into the key switch more or less as an accessory um, the only difference between this cart and one of these Honda type things is when you turn the key switch on on the on the Honda I guess it's in the center of the dashboard the power comes from the battery to the key switch you turn the key switch on and what it does is it sends 12 volts to the handlebars where you control your lights and so forth it also sell, sends 12 volts to the handlebars that allows you to push the bu push button that engages your starter right if your key switch is not on or if you're not sending power to the handlebars you can't use your fancy little starter button here to start things up so um, it, it, once again in the in the case of, of um, these all-terrain vehicles all your all your accessory controls so to speak are on the handlebars uh, instead of having the key switch where you turn it on and then you go to the next step to engage your starter obviously your starter is out here so anyway I'm sure um, for everybody who's not interested in in um, <laughs> wiring one of these things um, you've probably stopped ru running the the video and you've gone to get to get a drink of water or something or maybe took a nap um, but for those of you who have I'm sure there will be some additional um, questions just quickly let me uh, see if I can put all this on one one sheet and just kind of work my way down uh, charging circuit 
A lot of times there's two wires that come out from behind the flywheel. Um, sometimes they're two yellow wires, sometimes they're um, pink and yellow, sometimes they're white and yellow, um, sometimes they're white and pink, but there should be two wires, occasionally three wires that come out from behind the stator. Um, and what they do is they go into your little voltage regulator box and typically out of your little voltage regulator box is a red wire and a black wire um, and they go to your battery the red wire to positive and the black wire to negative um, so and that covers the last part of the whole discussion right you guys can see the pulse generator circuit up there right power into the bottom ground in the corner blue and yellow and once again that last unconnected lead that goes out to your spark coil typically it's black and yellow right your key switch doing double duty that should cover it I once again I hope this helps um, getting getting uh, making the wiring proper on my uh, on my son L alias all right folks take care um, remember, feet down, heads up. Hope you like this video. You can tell me with a thumbs up and a subscription. And if you don't like it, and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Please, please just tell me why. Bye now.